Good morning Wamboos. Uh, yesterday's video ended a little bit abruptly. I ran out of battery power. We've just come into Springbok and I was busy telling the story of how and why I bought this house. This is our head of operation or our base of operations in in the area. And I'm gonna go inside and finish the story because we're on the main road here from Cape Town that way to Namibia that way so there's gonna be a fair amount of road noise so let's go inside and finish this up okay I'm not quite sure how far I got yesterday with the battery ran out <clears throat> but uh, when uh, I decided to set up the uh, Kalahari the company Kalahari Lapidary an employee Yaku uh, and he was no longer a supplier he actually became an employee he was still staying with his mom in a town called Okip about seven kilometers from here and his mother is a, a, a foster mother. Uh, she looks after a whole lot of uh, uh, yeah, abused and abandoned kids. So it wasn't really conducive for cleaning. You know, your kids running around low on acid and stuff. Um, so and, and yeah, it's a very small place. You didn't have room to pack or, or sort. So I decided I was going to hire us or rent a house somewhere in the area. But then a house came up for sale. An old house, originally owned by the old Occup Copper Company built over a hundred years ago we had really thick sturdy walls you know one of those old places built to last and just super cheap and uh, I thought that that's what we'll do we'll just buy that house I mean when I say cheap it was between in American terms between 15 and 20 thousand dollars so it would have been a real steal but the estate agent was dragging your heels a bit and I got to thinking you know, this isn't a really good town uh, it's not growing, the, the, if I buy a house here, it's going to be really difficult to, uh, to sell in the future. And uh, cooler heads prevailed, and I uh, carried on looking, and then I found this place here in Springbok. And uh, it's been on the market for quite some time, I was looking in really bad repair, so I put in a really low ball offer, and lucky for me it's accepted. So that's how we now have the, the house here. And as a, as a rock hound, let's have a look at what we've got, what we're going to be taking home. All, right. All those flats are ready packed and sorted. Uh, all of those are packed and sorted. All of this stuff still has to be cleaned. So various stages of cleaning. Very similar to the stuff I got for the other Yaku yesterday, so we got a lot of it. Big stuff. You probably need a trim. Those came nice and clean, those obviously still need to be cleaned. These are really big pieces. This lot just came in yesterday so it's not cleaned at all other stuff needs to be sorted these big ones these are crazy that's quartz uh, the secondary covering I think is bare right a lot of these have got um, highline opal on them as well so they'll fluoresce under, U under ultraviolet and uh, some of them have got epido now this secondary growth I'm not sure is it a bare right or a calcite but it's really interesting so a whole lot of those. Let's see, black tourmaline in fuchsite. And yeah, there's just rocks everywhere. Oops. Uh, so Yaku stays here with his girlfriend most of the time. That's his bedroom there. And all they really use is the bedroom, the bathroom, and the kitchen. And the rest is all just rocks. Go through into the kitchen. Mining equipment, there's generators, jackhammers, all that other stuff. Another whole room full of rocks. More quartzes and uh, fluorite octahedrons. More boxes of rocks that need to be sorted. So yeah, we'll be taking as much back as we can fit in the in the Isuzu. And uh, that'll be appearing for sale on the website 
as soon as we get home, because what's nice about this lot is it's already in flats, it's already sorted, it's already cleaned. All we've got to do is photograph, upload to the website, and we're we'll ready to roll. Uh, so let's go and have a look at the cleaning operations. Alrighty, so this is where Yaku does all the cleaning. All these tubs are full of different types of acid. There's a lot more needs to be sorted. These are really nice smokies with hematite. Those will come out really nice when they're clean. Uh, the trouble with these, the, the Orange River crystals, is most of the value is in the cleaning. When we get them, they're all covered in this limestone. And getting that off is a real pain. Is when we're starting to see the color coming through. So we've got them in acid. See the coating that needs to come off. Let's have a look, see what we've got here. Definitely the acid working. Seeing the phantoms coming through on that one. After the acid, we will put it in, or not, we'll give it a, a spray with a spotting gun. It'll take any excess gunk off the outside. Still a hell of a lot of work to be done here. There's just rocks everywhere. Uh, also to take care of iron staining, we use oxalic acid. So, Kitty's paddling pools. Uh, more rocks. This is in oxalic. We'll see how that comes up. And uh, this is the acid we use. Uh, it's made by a company in Johannesburg, so I can't even give you a, uh, a brand name. Uh, 248XA. It's actually an aluminium cleaner. And I know, I don't know what the base acid is, but I do know it contains about 10% hydrofluoric acid, so you've got to be careful with it. Uh, you know, we also use nitric acid. And uh, last time I did bring down some. Uh, hydrochloric and sulfuric acid as well so he's obviously either used it or it's one of these empty tubs but uh, yeah uh, I originally employed Yaku to go mining for me but as it turns out he's spending much more of his time uh, just buying from the other mine other miners and then he'll send me a video or photographs and I'll say yes or no and send down money and then he gets to clean it all so this is what's keeping him busy mostly uh, at the moment. We are, however, discussing we were discussing our site. It's definitely time for another digging trip. So with a bit of luck, uh, before the end of this video series, we'll be going up into the mountains and get some footage out there as well. You can actually see how the how and where these things are dug in the Kalari Desert. So not quite sure what else I'm going to be doing today. I think I'm going to be taking a trip into Okip, uh, maybe Concordia. I have heard there's not a lot of people digging at the moment. Uh, COVID has hit the area really hard. So with very few buyers, uh, the guys just aren't bothering to go digging. Oh, here we got some amethyst. Wait, well, that's not amethyst, that's purple fluorite. I'd like to get a lot more amethyst, but it's kind of scarce in the area. These are beautiful. But much like my house at home, just rocks everywhere. Not enough hours in the day to clean and sort and get it all ready. So as quickly as they're cleaning, we're getting them up. Uh, they will be available at uh, kalahari-lapidary.rocks. Link in the description. And... Uh, then we're going to have a cup of tea and decide what we're going to be doing for the rest of the day. Alright, so we've got Yaku back here. He's just dropped his mom off to fetch the uh, grant checks and stuff. And we're going to get into some cleaning. 
Oh, it appears we've run into some sort of a, an electrical issue. So, oh, there we go. Spotting guns. Let me get a close up on that. Okay, this is a spotting gun. Uh, we're just working out the electrical issue, but these are actually used for cleaning textile. Uh, you get a really fine, but really powerful jet of water out of these. Needle fine. If you shoot yourself in the finger, you will bleed. But it's really good at getting to the little nooks and crannies and getting all that gun count. And uh, yeah, so we just took a few out of the acid here. These will get sprayed up now with some hematite, some amethyst. So once we sort out the electricity, we'll, we'll clean some rocks. And while Yaku's sorting out the electrics there, let's introduce you to our security team. This is Jasper. This is Ruby. <laughs> so what else have we got to clean today? Okay, we're going into the Springbok Lodge. Uh, there's a nice rock collection in there. Uh, get a look at that. Now, if you look up the road there, all those buildings with the yellow. There's, they're all over town. They're all part of the Springbok Lodge. Uh, an old guy by the name of Yopi bought up all the old historical buildings. The old store, the old granary, the old mission station. They're all part of the Springbok Lodge. So you walk into a little shop over here to get to the reception. And from there, they'll send you somewhere else in town. Uh, it's probably the most interesting place to stay in town if you're uh, ever visiting the town of Springbok. This is all the old guy's personal collection. These are from the Young Kutsia mine. Got one of those mine connections at home. And that really amuses me. The Ammonite, I recognize that navel so well. If you ever bought anything from Top Rock about 20 years ago, you'll recognize that label. I used to work with my buddy Nick, also doing the rocks and stuff. That's one of our labels from 20 years ago. town of Okip where I nearly bought a house very historical old town this uh, all built on the uh, 
old copper mining days. Uh, look at the old Cornish bean pump now. That's the old smokestack for the uh, pump. Copper was originally found here, uh, well, uh, back in 1700s, uh, when a guy called Simon von der Stel was uh, the governor of the Cape. A bunch of the local Nama people from this area pitched up in Cape Town some very high quality copper uh, to trade. And so an expedition was sent up somewhere around here and uh, a shaft was sunk and was found to be indeed really, really uh, rich in copper. But unfortunately at the time, in the 1700s, it was so remote out here that uh, it just wasn't feasible to dig it. Then in the 1800s, uh, a railway line uh, was put through to the, one of the, the coastal towns and uh, mining actually started here and uh, well it was, it was so poor in water it's actually a, it's a mule train so it's actually, a train was actually pulled by mules and uh, as the mines got deeper they started flooding uh, well, they, they started hitting water so they put in this old pump it's manufactured in England and then shipped out here and were reassembled and apparently it's still in working order probably needs to be greased and serviced but all the working parts are there we're just taking a slow walk over or should I say a slow hobble because unfortunately I woke up with a touch of gout in my ankle this morning which is, I, I just know I have the sympathy of any other gout sufferers out there. Luckily I don't get it too often, but when it does, it hurts. So there we go, this goes back to the, I'm not even sure of the dates. But in the 1800s, you know, I should really brush up on my research before I'm doing this. Uh, I have read the dates before, but I can't think of them offhand. So, oh well, I do come down here every second month or so. Generally, what we do is Yucca will bring me a consignment of stuff one month, and then the next month I'll drive down here and pick up the next lot. So, Maybe I'll redo this video at another time, but actually take the time to do the reading and get the dates and everything correct. Over there, that's a collapsed mine. I'll see if I can, no, I'm not gonna walk over there. <laughs> it's a bit uneven and my ankle's not good. So we'll leave that for another video, but it, the, the water is emerald green, uh, but poisonous, so... Uh, but this was all run by the uh, Copper Company for many years, but um, just recently uh, they, they've been bought out, and I've heard that the Nababip mine is reopened. This is going to reopen next and then the blue mine in springwalk is going to open up again so uh yeah just around the corner we'll go and have a look here the house that i nearly bought which i didn't buy because i didn't know the mine was reopening and i thought that the property would just uh, depreciate in value but if they're opening the mine it's going to appreciate same with my house in springbrook that's only going to go up in value if the mines are reopened and more people are coming to town We can look in there. Can't see much through the bars. Looks like an old boiler.
but there we go the old town of Okip which has been here since the I guess mid 1800s also had a lot uh, it's important to have a place during the Anglo Boer War apparently the last shots of the Anglo Boer War were fired here because um, uh, the Treaty of Prehendigung had been signed but this being so remote nobody managed to get the word back so they were still fighting a week or two after the the war was officially over and that's the big old house that i nearly bought those walls are super thick it was built over a hundred years ago by the original Oak copper company as i mentioned earlier the uh, real estate agent was dragging her feet on it and so I looked around and I rather got the one in Springbok. I could have got that for an absolute steal. And with the mine reopening, that might be worth a few bucks in the near future. So just take a drive through town, get a feel for what the area is like. Since the mines closed, most of the little towns have gotten really impoverished. Somewhere along here, that might have been a bit there. Uh, somewhere along here, there's the uh, studio for Radio Namakwa. And uh, Yaku's mom is actually a bit of a minor celebrity appearing on the radio quite often. Most of these houses date a couple of hundred years old. That's pretty much it. That's the town of Okip. Once very successful, wealthy little mining town. Now, just run down and forgotten. And this is the little village of Concordia. Dorpi, as it's known locally. And also a very historical town. It's under siege during the Boer War. I keep mentioning the Boer War, and I'm sure most international people don't know what that is. But uh, yeah, maybe I'll do a, a video on that, on that sometime. It's just purely historical, rather than trying to remember my primary school history lessons on the fly. Do a, a whole um, a video on that if anybody's interested. But yeah, no crystals. Uh, nobody in town's got any crystals. Uh, uh, lack of buyers due to COVID. And there's been a couple of weeks of really freezing weather. Nobody wanted to go out. So nothing new. Actually, uh, the reason why Yaku wasn't there uh, when we started filming this morning, because he was somewhere around here. Uh, with an, you know, supposed to meet an old guy to get uh, permission to dig Smokey's Smoky quarters on his farm. Uh, trouble is, they forgot that today is uh, Government Grants Day, so the guy had to go get his pension. So, yeah, today's old age pensioners are getting their government grants, tomorrow's disabled, and the day after that is uh, mothers with small children. But, yeah. We did get a lot of really good crystals out of this area a few months ago. Actually, I think it's just up this road. It's pretty much in town, uh, right near the sports field. Uh, we had a, a pocket of what we called uh, Kalahari Spirit Crystals, very similar to the um, uh, Buknotok Spirit Quartz Crystals. So we call them uh, Kalahari Spirit Crystals. Uh, similar kind of shape. They got smoky crystals with a secondary overgrowth of uh, uh, clear quartz or white quartz so you get the smoky core with uh, 
smaller uh, crystals down the shafts of the main crystal and I think I've still got a bunch at home that we've got to get around to cleaning up also out this way was I can't remember where but I have been there before it's the old Yankutsia mine which is well, like most of the other mines out here a copper mine but they did hit massive massive uh, quartz crystals with their green inclusions and uh, they were well sought after for a while but the mine closed and was cemented over but rumors have it that there is a ventilation shaft that some locals know and there are rumors of a massive crystal cavern and every now and then they do come available I've had three I think all about the, the length of my arm uh, really nice crystals so if we don't know is it a rumor is this old stock that people have got lying around uh, we don't know but um, hopefully if they are reopening the mines in the area and they reopen that one we might be able to get a line on uh, those big crystals because they were really beautiful my one I got at home has actually got a couple of little secondary limonite crystals growing on the outside This area is normally completely dry and barren. It did have a little bit of rain with the cold weather. And when it rains out here, the daisies come out. Quite a lot of wind, so I hope you can hear what I'm saying. Every year, a different color seems to uh, predominate. Sometimes orange, purple, pink. Never know what colors you're gonna get. Any older rock dealers watching this, there's a name that might ring a bell for you. George Swanson. He passed away a few years ago, but what a character he was. Uh, mostly known for the uh, Namibian blue lace agate. But unfortunately, that's not coming out anymore. But this is what I want to do around the house that I've got down the road here. Uh, for the wall. It's all chrysocolla, malachite, all the local ores. And there's a bunch of the road here, which I'm guessing used to belong to George. I'm trying to figure out who to speak to, maybe make an offer on all these piles of rocks. Some uh, uh, rose quartz, some tiger's eye, chrysocolla, African turquoise, a bunch of different stuff. And that's what I want to do with my wall. Jasper, agate, uh, malachite in quartz, uh, amphiboly. It's a really cool way to make a wall, I think. If I didn't get the house I'm in, that one there was my second choice. I'm 
apparently it is all working well on the property but uh, we just decided the one we were in suited our, uh, suited our, uh, our purposes better. The wind's blowing pretty hard, so I don't know if you're able to hear me. So I'll go do the voiceover bit when I'm sitting in the car, but at least we're getting the visuals here now. Okay, it's really gusty out there, and I don't know how badly the wind's affecting the microphone, so I thought I'd do the voice for this part sitting here. That is the blue mine, uh, the spot where uh, copper was first co uh, produced in commercial quantities in South Africa. Uh, it was started in 1852, changed hands several times until it was acquired by the uh, OCC, the Occup Copper Company, and... Uh, I stayed with them until they ceased production but there's a lot of chrysocolla. cola there's a lot of malachite uh, I want to find out who do I speak to to get in there and just pick up some chunks and hopefully build a garden wall out of it or maybe make up a few flats it's certainly not high-end uh, faceting or uh, specimen material but just super interesting uh, so if I can get it super cheap been nice to have a piece in any given collection and we're right on the outskirts of the town of Springbok and it's literally within three minutes of uh, my house in Springbok uh yeah so that's that the uh the old uh blue mine okay that's the end of uh day two uh not very eventful we didn't get much new stuff today uh but tomorrow i have received word that there are some guys uh in uh, pella we've got some good red crystals maybe some other stuff so the plan is to head for pella tomorrow and then maybe some of the more remote settlements depending on the quality of the road I've heard since the rains they are in very bad condition so we'll have to uh, well find out so that's it for me from me for tonight don't forget to like subscribe and uh, all that good stuff like comment subscribe uh, we'll be back tomorrow uh, going around as I went, some of the more remote um, more remote settlements see what we get Cheers, and we'll see you again tomorrow.